Hey everybody, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com taking a look at my second drive of the Red Cat Racing Sandstorm four-wheel drive RTR. Between the last video where it was my first drive of it in box stock form and this one here I've made two small simple changes. Now the first thing was to the suspension because out of the box the suspension setup is woefully just... Oops, <laughs> that wasn't the suspension setup, that was me sucking. But uh, the suspension was terrible. The damping action was like water. It was as if there was no oil in the shocks at all. There was oil in the shocks. The, oil, the shocks were completely filled with oil, but the setup was all wrong. Now, all too frequently, when the setup of an RTR, especially a cheap vehicle, is bad, folks immediately say, ah, well, you gotta get some big bore shocks, get some low C S C T E shocks, or some hot bodies, D8 shocks, you know, 13 to 16 millimeter, all aluminum, anodized, big bores, and then you're good to go. Well, I say no. What I've done here is just change out the oil, nothing else. Didn't change out the positions of where things are mounted, didn't change the springs. The springs are actually okay, just needed uh, stiffer or thicker oil. Now, unfortunately, the way that these shocks are designed, I keep messing up in that one little chicane section. It's really weird. The shock pistons actually have not holes in them, but slots along the sides, huge slots that make it so that you are not able to get any sort of pack in them. So you need to use incredibly thick or unusually thick oil. I'm using 5,000 weight diff oil, which is probably equivalent to, I'd say, I don't know, 300 weight shock oil, something like that. So really ridiculous compared to the norm, but it works just fine. And this is so much better. It's not bottoming out like it did in stock form. I'm able to get some more more consistent uh, uh, landing, and it's not bouncing so badly off the landing. still bounces somewhat, especially on that one right there. It's actually landing on an up slope because it's not getting enough speed. But speaking of speed, I did increase the speed here by putting in a different battery. So I've put in a simple one of my lower end uh, 2S LiPo packs here, and I haven't changed anything else out. I do want to point out, that the manufacturer does say in the manual that you should not use a lipo with this car so i'm doing it at my own risk because i can and i wanted to did not say that on the website doesn't say that in the description of the vehicle anywhere so i bought this assuming that i would be able to like with all other 10th scale rcs nowadays hobby grade just drop in a lipo maybe have to change the gearing a little bit but would at least be able to run it so here it is, running around the track with the LiPo, and the speed is just fine. I'm perfectly happy with the speed, with the acceleration here. It's able to move around under its own power just fine. The motor was running a little bit on the warm side, but not too hot. Uh, pretty happy with the thing on the whole until I came around this corner, and uh, yeah, it stopped moving. That's not good. I wish that I had smell-o-vision here on YouTube because if only you could smell the smell of that burnt printed circuit board formerly known as the stock ESC. Yep, it went about uh, five, six minutes. It's hot, not too hot though. Motor, you know, I can put my finger on it, on both of them, but unfortunately the ESC completely dead no chance of it ever coming back it is destroyed so i took the risk and i paid the price voltage wise a lipo pack 2s is equivalent to about the same as a seven cell nickel metal hydride so you really really only can run six cell nickel metal hydrides in this car and that makes me sad very sad